Hell Jumpers, Epilogue, Part 4. Every pony had already taken a seat on one of the pillows that were present as Twilight led her family into the room. They exchanged pleasantries with the other ponies in the room and sat down. Twilight opened the saddlebag she had taken and pulled a holographic projector from it. The attending ponies watched with interest as Twilight set up the device. She just managed to finish as Scootaloo, Vinyl, and Octavia entered the room. You took a holo projector? Awesome! Scootaloo said as she saw the device in the middle of the room. Twilight looked back at Scootaloo. I thought it would be useful to have it on Huff while we explain some non-graphic things. Twilight said as she booted up the device. The ponies gasped as the hologram of the planet they had first landed on appeared. I guess this is as good a time to start as any. Twilight said as she toggled the hologram off for the moment. Since I only told Dash bits and pieces, I think it's best to start at the beginning. And that's when we were taken off the planet by them. Twilight finished. Everyone had remained relatively quiet throughout the start of the story. Dash raised her hoof as she had a question. So you guys went from being on the verge of killing each other to fleeing from the planet together in, what, two hours? They didn't at first, but after I took down the Zealots, their trust in the two of us grew really quickly. Twilight answered, Celestia being the next pony to say something. Twilight, I know you were in a war, but... You're talking as if killing that being meant nothing to you. Twilight shook her head. It really did bother me at the time. By that, she means she was a complete mess, thinking that she was completely unredeemable. Scootaloo cut in. Thank you, Corporal. Your support has been noted. And yes, I was a mess. But if I hadn't killed him there, he would have gone on to fight and murder hundreds of innocents before someone else killed him. Twilight said coldly. It was the war of genocide, Princess. In the end, it was nothing personal, and just a simple calculation. Twilight could see a couple of ponies shudder what she said, but was determined to continue the story. Anyway, after we got away, we headed for Reach. After the Spartan left, we continued training for another before the Winter Contingency was declared. After that, we had to wait two and a half more weeks before we actually saw action. What's Winter Contingency? It sounds scary. Fluttershy shivered. The Pegasus has been hiding for half the story already, and Twilight hadn't even reached the worst parts. Winter Contingency is the emergency plan to follow for when a colony gets attacked or found by the Covenant. Scootaloo answered for Twilight. Also, the guys managed to get Twilight so drunk, she started imitating Nightmare Moon in those three weeks. She added, as she grinned. Twilight snorted. You got pulled from that bar by military police after knocking yourself and another marine out in a bar fight. The other ponies could do nothing but stare at the two ponies that were telling their story until Apple Bloom spoke up. Scoots? You knocked out someone? Yeah, <laughs> did it again this evening. Vinyl said, which prompted a sputtering defense from Scootaloo. He was stopping me from getting into the nightclub, and unlike that guy at Reach, I didn't electrocute him. And how did thou electrocute that soldier? Luna asked, as she seemed to be quite amused. Scootaloo sighed and opened her wings. Sparks of electricity started arcing from the wings to the ground, as Scootaloo pushed magic into them. A true hurricane, then. Luna smirked while Celestia rolled her eyes. Make sure you two don't destroy half of Canterlot when you inevitably go for a flight. Now, we should go back to the story before this escalates. You were about to tell us about your first fights with this Covenant, right? Twilight nodded and changed the hologram and overview of a city. Well, after those weeks, we were called to a city called New Alexandria. And we stayed in Stalwar Dawn for the remainder of our time until Reach got glassed. Twilight finished once again. It was one of the worst experiences I ever had. Seeing that many souls needlessly getting wasted. But you won, right? Rumble said, having until now been quiet. We won a day in a losing battle. Four days after our victory, Reach was glassed. Glassed? The cult asked, 
Scootaloo looked at Twilight, who changed the hologram to one of Reach before it was glassed. This was the planet before the glassing. She changed it to the version where the surface was burning. This is what happens to a planet after glassing. Darling, is that fire? Rarity asked, as every pony was staring at the hologram with terror in their eyes. Yes, they burn the surface to glass. That's how the process got its name. Twilight answered. Can we continue? Scootaloo awkwardly asked. I don't like to remember what happened to that planet. Me neither. Twilight said. Anyway, we were boarded when we fled from the system. Twilight felt Celestia's magic probe her as she told the group about her use of dark magic. I sealed it away to dispense of later, Princess. Twilight told her teacher as she saw her parents, brother, and Cadence also looking at her in concern. Just making sure, Celestia said to her, as she stopped probing her fellow princess. Anyway. And that's when we arrived at Earth. It's also where I got this medal. Twilight finished pointing at her bronze star. It's an award given to soldiers that perform an act of bravery. Despite my use of dark magic, I still saved the entire crew from being killed by the boarders. Shining looked at the metal pinned on Twilight's dress suit. And what's the other for, since you both have it? He asked, as he studied the second medal. It's the Medal of Honor, the most prestigious decoration the UNSC has. Twilight answered, her brother staring at her slack-jawed. It'll come up later in the story. Twilight said, as to prevent further questions. After we got to Earth, Dash started to get involved. You know, I never read that letter. It appeared when I was in the middle of a drop, so I stashed it in a pocket and it got ruined while fighting. Scootaloo explained, as Twilight finished her story of what she did in New Mombasa. Wait, you went out and dropped for another time, even after the time you nearly died? Apple Bloom asked, baffled. Scootaloo nodded. It was my job over there. Well, I'd do it again if they asked me. She said, and turns to the purple alicorn. Twilight, do you have a hologram of Halo? Twilight nodded, and the hologram changed to show one of the ring worlds. This was what I was strapping onto. After that, me and Johnson crashed in on Twilight and the others. Scootaloo finished, as she caught up to where Twilight left off. Dash smirked at the filly. So you made friends with the aliens that were trying to kill you? You got beaten to the punch, Miss Princess of Friendship. She told Twilight, who smirked back at the Pegasus. Did I now? <laughs> Guess I have to step up my game. She replied, as she pulled a stack of papers from one of the bags she had brought in from the Pelican. I suppose I'd need to show these to you anyway, Tia. Celestia took the papers and scans the first page before looking back at Twilight. You negotiated a treaty of cooperation? Not exactly. If that agreement is signed, formal relations are established between the UNSC, and negotiations can start. Twilight explained. We'll go over them after we finish telling the story. She told the princess before continuing. After Scootaloo found me again, we got called to the surface to find the chief. That's when we took off with a gunship. Scootaloo said, as tears started forming in her eyes. Initially, our air support gave us a significant edge on the coveys. She suddenly broke down in sobbing. Octavia shot forward to comfort her filly. Twilight also joined in on comforting the little filly. Is she okay? Cadence asked, concerned. Twilight shook her head. That gunship was shot down by a scarab. Zoe didn't make it. She answered for the filly, while levitating a glass of water over for her to drink. I'll continue on my own for a bit. After we took out the AA turret, an assault was launched on the Forerunner Dreadnought. Only we came too late. And I managed to activate the structure and opened a portal to the Ark. So Scootaloo, me, Mac, Lucy, Chief, Cortana, and Arbiter stayed behind to activate the Halo while everyone else retreated from the Ark. Scootaloo had meanwhile calmed down as Twilight continued the story, giving input so every now and then. So y'all managed to activate Halo and get out as well? Applejack asked. Scootaloo shook her head. 
Not all of us. She grimly said. Mac and Johnson never made it out of the control room. And when we managed to reach the forward onto Dawn, we lost the Chief and Cortana somewhere in slip space. That was a week ago. After that, we were rewarded the Medal of Honor along with everyone who stayed behind. And after that, I got the paperwork from the Admiral before leaving with the Elites to this system. Twilight finished. Although, we should probably talk about the Discord issue now. He did kind of help us. Scootaloo said, but Twilight shook her head. His story isn't consistent with reality. He opened that rift a thousand years ago, and yet he also claims that he couldn't plan long term. Which means he had alternative motives. Not surprising, but an issue nonetheless. What's your proposal to do with him? Celestia asked Twilight. For the moment, properly seal his powers. But if we can figure out his motives, we might be able to work with him. Celestia nodded. I will have the guest rooms prepared for everyone, as I don't want you waking the entirety of Canterlot with your craft. The princess told every pony, as she stood back up herself. All of the others also stood up to go to bed and try to process everything they had heard. Hey, Twilight! The filly looked back at the purple alicorn. What do we do now? The purple alicorn thought for a moment. I guess whatever we want. But I don't think I'd be able to sleep if I didn't do something to improve the safety of the planet. Scootaloo grinned a bit. Are you proposing what I'm thinking? Twilight grinned back. Helljumpers. Man, it's been a long frickin' journey. For those of you who have stuck by, even back then when I had a really shitty mic, thank you very much. And I really hope you enjoyed this, because Commander Applejack did such a fan-fucking-tastic work with the story. Man, I still can't believe it's actually done. <laughs> but before I become annoying with reminiscing too much, let's get on to our brave donators. Top donators are 630, TacoCat598, Only One Thing, Saru Orion, and Iron Sky. Darkside, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Two Hex, Sword Brother, Marjorie, Omicron Lyrae, Will, Chris, Twinkie, Ride Soul, Badass Waffle, Shadow Moon, Luigi88, Chancellor Crust, Big Smoke369, Bobcat GJF, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching through this series, and live life to the fullest.